MasterChef is down to the final four. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. The closer you get, the more you want it. Yeah, I have got a really good chance if I could just hold it all together. This is one tough competition. I desperately want to win it. I want to win it so much. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. It's the MasterChef semi-finals. Today, these four amateur cooks are going to be pushed to the next level, creating exquisite high-end food for the most discerning of palates. First, they need to show they're capable of perfectly executing a classic recipe. The dish looked fantastic before you scattered sangria over the top of it. Then they face their most nerve-wracking challenge yet, cooking for some of the best business minds in the UK at one of London's most prestigious clubs. It leaves you wanting more. I could do with another helping. Anyone leaving it? <laughs> I'm absolutely ready to change my life. The thought that I potentially could walk out of here as the master chef, you know, it would be a dream. To win master chef would be amazing. There's a long way to go yet to win, but it's getting to the stage where I can almost reach it. The career that I've got is going nowhere, so I'm just going to grab it and run with it now because you're just not going to get an opportunity like this ever again. It feels absolutely brilliant to be in the semi-finals, but that's not the end game for me. I, I want to go all the way. We know you're great cooks, but now it's time for you to step it up one more mark. Gentlemen, one hour and 30 minutes, let's cook. The contestants will all cook the same classic recipe, a beef wellington. Classics are classics because people love them. We want big flavours, we want perfectly cooked meat, and we want very attractive plates of food. We've seen our guys cook quality and quantity, but now really is about taking it that one step further. Today, this beef wellington has to be worthy of a restaurant table. The fillet of beef needs to be perfectly seared, then covered in a mushroom duxelle. Then the pastry has to be rolled and chilled, and a crepe made that will protect it from the heat of the beef and stop it from going soggy. They will also have to make fondant potatoes, cook the spinach and create a red wine sauce. Twenty-four-year-old Christopher from Suffolk has shown a real flair for modern British cooking. Absolutely perfect. But his inexperience causes him to make basic mistakes. I think you've got to take care of those seasonings. And can slow him down. What's concerning me is that you end up frying fish to order with a big queue of hungry still workers. Tricky dish? Um, yeah, I mean, it's tricky because I've never cooked it before, so the pressure's on a bit and there's loads to do. I'm conscious of the time and everything, so... Do you have the experience, you think, to take you all the way? Yeah, you know, experience is something I'm lacking in. Um, I, you know, I'm well aware of that, but, you know, it's not going to stop me trying my hardest to, to win, so... Christopher loves classic British seasonal food. That's what he does. This should be right up his alley. The competition's hotting up and you just need to raise the bar. I haven't embarrassed myself yet, so hopefully I can, I can beat them. Half an hour gone, gentlemen. You are going to have to crank it up a notch. Family man Matt produces big flavoured rustic food. This is like your pallets on a carousel ride. And has proved he can make it en masse. I'm loving it. But today's test could be his undoing. I need to learn the fine dining way of cooking. 
and I need to learn how to take the really good tasting plate of food and make it look better. Matt, how many times have you made a beef wellington before? Three or four, but never with these ingredients. Right. Apart from the beef and the pastry. Yeah. And the hardest bit of this uh, process? I don't do red wine sauces, so this is blind completely for me. Matt, are you confident? No. Guys, you've had an hour already. You've only got half an hour left. I'm really worried about your beef. You need to have it wrapped and get it in the oven. Comeback contestant Andy is determined to prove second time round he's got what it takes to win. I think it's beautifully cooked. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. But his attention to detail oh, can sloppy. let him down. It really is a bit sloppy. I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself. It is tough, and I know it's going to get tougher. I really want to impress, and anything less I'll be disappointed with. Andy, are you comfortable with this dish? I can't say I've ever ordered it on a restaurant menu or ever cooked it myself. It's not my comfort zone, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, hopefully. What part of this recipe are you the most concerned about? The whole crepe thing. I had no idea there was even a crepe inside of Beef Wellington. Um, so that's a new one on me. You're going to have to start to motor because your time is ticking away. You've got 20 minutes left. 42-year-old father of two, Chris, has proved he can produce diverse and exciting food. Mate, I love that. But he often gives himself too much to do. You, Chris, started off doing courgette. They don't appear. If you're not going to use it, don't cook it. To win now, you've got to be so organised. You've got to think on your feet. I've got to start upping my performance um, and quickly. Chris, you got a sweat on already. As always. Are you stressed about today? My biggest concern is time. Now, I've no doubt if I was making this at home, with all the hours in the day, I could, I could pull it off. Whether I can do it in an hour and a half is, is going to be the big test for me. You have ten minutes left. Sixty seconds, guys. Those last touches, please. With seconds to go, disaster strikes. Matt's sauce has burnt, and Chris is panicking. That's it. Finished. Time's up. Start with Christopher. Has his first ever attempt at a beef Wellington made the grade? Meat is rare, sight soft, pastry is well cooked, so is the spinach, the duck cell around the outside is good. I think by and large it's a pretty decent job. For me, it just all needs a bit more seasoning. I think you've got to work on your seasoning because I think you had a near on perfect dish. Matt is desperate to prove he can deliver on both his robust flavours and finesse. We have no red wine sauce. I burnt the red wine sauce. I didn't want to serve it burnt. If it had a red wine sauce, you would have ended up with an elegant dish. And what is surprising for me today, Matt, is you have moved away from that robust, rustic look. The flavour predominantly is that duck cell around the outside of it. Proportionately, as well, we have an issue because we haven't got enough spinach on the plate. Yeah. Okay. I love the flavour of those mushrooms coming through. That is powerful. But it is desperately crying out for that missing sauce. Chris only just managed to finish in time. I think you nearly had a good-looking dish and then you decided to do paint splashes around the outside. Not a fan at all. This potato isn't cooked. Neither is that one. Pastry, sauce, beef, very nice. Beef seasoned, and I like it a lot. 
The flavours are balanced absolutely beautifully and the dish looked fantastic before you scattered half your sangria over the top of it. Andy has cooked his beef wellington without the crepe, an integral part of the recipe. Is there a pancake in there? No. I wanted to get the beef in, in good time, so I didn't, I didn't do the pancake. If a recipe has something like a crepe in it, there is a real big reason for it. And by not doing it, you're the only one with soggy pastry. There are some really good flavours in there, but what I'm left with is sort of flabby, soggy pastry that's sitting inside my mouth, which is fairly unpleasant. I like the flavours, but I think it looks like a bit of a car accident. Interesting day. You are going to have to raise the game. You have a big test in front of you now. Go on, off you go. Fine dining, and these guys have to understand that means restaurant quality. I think young Christopher made a decent fist of that Wellington. It was really nicely presented. It just needed a little bit more seasoning. He's almost there. If there was somebody who has made a step they need to make, it was Matt today. Instead of being big and rustic, he started to refine it. But we asked for a sauce, you didn't produce one. You know, that's failing the task, I'm afraid. And he looked at the recipe, thought, actually, I know how to make a beef wellington, and it's not really made like that, and he really tripped up. I don't know what got into Chris today. How can you take the classic beauty of a beef wellington and then spray sauce all over it? That was just abominable. Tomorrow, they have a very, very challenging task. And we can't have mistakes like this going on. We simply can't. It's the morning of day two, and these semi-finalists have a lot to prove. I've just got to raise my game bloody quickly. One of us has to step forward and take this by the scruff of the neck and show that they want to win this. I think I need to stop worrying so much about keeping up with the others. I need to have more confidence in myself. If you're drawing a graph, I'm heading south at the moment and I need to reverse that. And I want to do that the next opportunity I get. Now, the final four people, you do realistically think, well, yeah, I have got a really good chance if I could just hold it all together. Today, they will be cooking at the Institute of Directors. They can't afford any more basic mistakes. Welcome to the splendid surroundings of the Institute of Directors. You are preparing dinner tonight for the Director General of the IOD himself and guests. Now, these people are very well known in the business world. They are very, very demanding and they are used to the best. You four are here because we believe in you. Do us proud, go and cook some great food and show these guys what you're really made of. Off you go. The IOD has been based on London's Pall Mall since 1903 and its members include many of Britain's most successful business leaders. Everyone from prime ministers to presidents have eaten here. So head chef Roger Evans expects only the very best. Good afternoon, gentlemen. We've got a very important day ahead of us, a busy day, and the standards that we demand at the Institute of Directors are of the highest quality. OK, if you'd like to follow me. Chris, this is going to be your section here. Matt, you'll be working on this side. Andy, we're going to set you up on this table. Christopher, this is all your equipment here. Each contestant has created their own course for tonight's dinner. They have just two and a half hours before the guests arrive. The food has got to match the exacting standards of our diners tonight. There is no room for mistakes. They have to get it absolutely right. We've got two and a half hours till the starter goes. So let's start moving the pace up. We can't be late with that first course. 
Christopher will be first up, so timings are crucial for his starter of spinach and ricotta ravioli with walnut pesto and a cream and basil sauce. Christopher, you're kicking the whole thing off tonight. You're doing the starter. Does that bring added pressure? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't want to mess the timing up. I don't want to put everyone else under pressure that isn't really needed. He's given himself a lot to do, making perfect pasta. Have you measured that correctly? Yeah, yeah it's all quite OK, accurate. that's yeah. fine. And moulding faultless parcels of ravioli. If there's any kind of air pockets in it, as soon as it hits the boiling water, they're just going to explode and you're just going to get a soggy mess, really. So, yeah, you know, it's, it is a worry. OK, guys, come on. Start pushing. There's two hours left, and Chris will need every minute if he's to make up for yesterday's mistakes. Screw up today, and I think I'm as good as out of the competition. It's that simple. His delicately flavoured dish of Dover sole with a lemongrass velouté needs to be perfect. You believe you need to give us some sort of spark of brilliance, don't you? I kind of feel like I'm losing you a little bit, because I haven't produced the last couple of times. I'm desperate to get through. Absolutely oh. desperate. With the clock ticking, Chris will have to work quickly to get everything done in time. He's got to make a tomato chutney, balance the flavours in his lemongrass and chervil velouté, and fillet his fish. The storm will hit ten minutes before service, when I've got to get eight fillets perfectly cooked and on the pass. The yeah. fish is the key. You're looking a bit puzzled there, Matt. What's up? Just mentally portioning it up, Chef. You think I... you're going to be tight? Yeah. Yeah, I do as well. I think you better get some more on, OK? Right, I'm on it. Yesterday, Matt showed he's capable of finesse, but he burned his red wine sauce. Can he continue to improve his presentation with his main of seared lamb loin, salsa verde and pea puree? Proportion, elegance, finesse. Yes. Matt, are they words that work with you? This is what I'm here to learn, so this is what I'm going to try and demonstrate to you that I'm learning. I'm completely out of my comfort zone. I'm scared stiff at doing eight fine dining dishes, all looking the same. OK, guys. For now, till everyone arrives. Andy's dessert of peach soup topped with a sorbet, peach crisps and wild strawberries requires fiddly preparation and an eye for detail. Andy, beavering away, your own recipe today. Yeah. So you might even follow it. Yes. I think the last plate of food I produced was a mess and I don't feel good about that. So that's, that's what I'm going to put right today. Come on, let's go a bit quicker. Come on. In his eagerness to impress, Andy spends too long making the delicate peach crisps and is running out of time to mix and freeze his sorbet. Having soft sorbet when it comes to service is going to be a disaster. A bit quicker. OK, get those away in there now. With just 45 minutes until service, will Andy's sorbet set in time? Just fingers crossed now. It's 7.30 and the guests arrive. Hosting the dinner is the Director General of the IOD, Miles Templeman. Also attending is Simon Woodruff, founder of restaurant chain Yo Sushi, successful entrepreneur Emma Harrison, Jonathan Neem of food and drink giant Shepherd Neem, and Tim Campbell, founder of a charity supporting young entrepreneurs. Come on, Chris, let's start moving it now. We cannot be late on this. 
At the last minute, Chef spots a serious problem. Chris, what are you planning to do here? How many are you planning to give? Uh, just the one. I think you're going to have to give two each. They're yep. very tiny. OK. They should have been bigger. But you haven't got long. You really have now got to start moving. You're going against the clock. Christopher now has to make eight more ravioli. With Paramount, Christopher picks up speed, because otherwise every other dish will suffer, and we can't have that happen. And I thought one would be good enough. It's a bit of a nightmare, really. You need to work faster than those, buddy. How's those ravioli? Let's have a look. This is critical now. Critical for the whole service. One goes wrong, someone's going to go without it, basically. So, yeah, it's not good at all. They haven't split, have they? Not so far. No. That's it. Let's go. Come on. OK. What will the guests make of Christopher's spinach and ricotta ravioli with pesto, walnuts and a creamy basil sauce? For me, the, the ravioli is a bit hard. It's, it's, hard. it's a bit yeah, hard. Yeah, it's absolutely. overwhelmed with the pesto. The, the, the pesto is a bit strong. Too much. I don't mm. think there's... It's not very delicate, is it? The pasta was slightly hard in places and therefore not as perfect as it might have been. I kind of threw in a little bit of a curveball today, having to dish up two ravioli, something I wasn't planning on doing. I think it could have maybe gone a little bit better. Starter plates have been cleared, Chris, so come on. Chris is next to serve. Can he bring all the components of his fish dish together on time? Put your fish in. Chris, let's go. Mate, I'm not taking my eyes off this. Chris has made Dover sole, served with tomato chutney, basil crisps and a lemongrass velouté. Fantastic. Look, I love the subtlety of the flavour in the sauce. My actual mouth is watering as I'm eating yeah. it. Yeah. I think it's an excellent dish. Flavours are all nicely balanced. I thought the sole was well cooked. You can really taste the quality of the fish. It's, mm. it's lovely. It leaves you wanting more. I could do with another helping. Anyone leaving it? <laughs> I'm really pleased with myself. I think, you know, I've stayed calm throughout. It's a really, really good, valuable experience and a bit of a boost to the confidence as well. Come on, Matt. Start going. Don't let the side down. Let's go. Matt is next up with his lamb main course. Move it. Come on. Can he show the finesse needed? Try and keep them all the same size, all the same shape. Come on. Matt's made seared lamb loin with pea puree, mange to, and a salsa verde. Brilliant. It's not brilliant presentation. I have just tasted the meat, and it is really superb. The meat is wonderful. It's the most memorable dish on the menu, and I love the spices of it. I want to go in the kitchen and nick some more right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a step up in presentation. <laughs> Overall, pretty happy. 
They're clearing now, so we need to have a bit of action. Last up, it's Andy. Come on, Andy, let's go, come on. They don't want to be here for breakfast. Yes, sir. They're here for dinner. Come on, bit more action, come on, bit more speed. It's the moment of truth for Andy's sorbet. I was worried that you'd come up trumps with that. That's it, nice. OK. Ready to go. Thank you. Andy's made an inventive dessert of peach soup, fromage frais sorbet, peach crisps and wild strawberries. Very pretty. Wild, small strawberries. Look at it. It's unusual. It's different. Mind you, to me, it looks like a druid sundial. <laughs> I just think it looks outstanding. It's just very clever. Very oh, cold, this ice yeah. cream. Mm -hmm. And the soup yeah. isn't cold. No. It's got a contrast yeah, of being at room temperature. This is a lovely way to finish the mm. meal off. To get positive comments from them is, is a massive boost to the confidence. Agreed, it was a wonderful meal. If all our dinner parties was as good as this, <laughs> we'd be very happy. You did a great job, so thank you very much. It's the end of a long day. The contestants have fought back to regain some lost confidence. They've come in here and they've proved they can actually hold themselves together and produce good food. By and large, I think our guys did very, very well this evening. These are amateur guys. I think they are progressing nicely. Chris said he had to put on a good show today, and I think he's done it. Chris is now on his way. I feel like I'm back in the game now. I've been down the last couple of days, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to be uh, sleeping well tonight with a smile on my face. It's great news. I think for Christopher, it was not a good round. We know he's got natural talent, but is the inexperience beginning to show? Are there cracks appearing? The competition's hotting up. You do want to perform to the best, and I've let myself down. Matt has now learned how to couple his big flavours with a little bit of finesse. That guy is getting there. If I can keep that up, I think I can probably get through to the final. That's my goal this week. Finally, Andy is starting to show some of that skill that got him here in the first place. That is brilliant. I'm feeling pretty good. I know I've come some way to making up for the last challenge that didn't go so well. It's not enough for me. I want to do well in all the next tasks, so bring on the next challenges. Next time, there's everything to play for, because one of these semi-finalists will be going home.